Tennessee Senator Marsha Blackburn, meanwhile, landed in Taiwan this week, meeting with Taiwanese President in Taipei this morning. Senator Blackburn calling Taiwan a country, saying it's important to support it in its, quote, preserving of its freedom. She landed in Taiwan for the surprise visit last night. Joining me right now is Atlas Organization founder and the author of China's Vision of Victory, Jonathan D.T. Ward is here. Jonathan, good to see you. Thanks very much. Your reaction to Senator Blackburn making her way all the way over there to Taiwan in this surprise visit. Uh, was this an important message? Hi, Maria. Well, I think it's important to show solidarity with Taiwan at this point. I mean, the Chinese Communist Party's provocations have been going on for quite a long time. Um, you know, it's really they that are undermining the um, general sort of peace in Asia. So um, making sure that America is focused on um, this island, that we understand it from a bipartisan point of view, um, particularly after Nancy Pelosi's visit, which certainly um, raised, I think, um, the, the profile and the stature of Taiwan for, for many who were not following the issue. I mean, now it's very uh, top of mind. And and it's important to keep it in the public imagination that this is um, really the, the uh, sort of the ramparts of democracy and freedom. I mean, this island is as important as any place on earth. So showing that solidarity and support, I think, matters a great deal. Well, do you think we're going to see some retaliation? We know how upset the CCP got when Nancy Pelosi went to Taiwan, uh, threatening that they would take down her, uh, her plane. What kind of pushback are we expecting from the CCP over this trip? Well, I think they'll continue to normalize um, broader military exercises. I mean, and, and it, when we look at what they did um, earlier this month as retaliation, I think it um, sort of misreads the fact that exercises of that kind do not happen overnight. I mean, that was carefully and meticulously planned, and then they hang it on the hook of Pelosi's visit. But essentially, um, you know, this is a military and an um, authoritarian government that is planning and, and um, exercising and, you know, working towards the ability to um, either blockade or even invade this island. Um, so, so these these plans and activities are, are very um, long in the making, and I don't think we should, um, you know, sort of uh, fault ourselves for paying greater attention to this island. Um, it's really the party that well, has these long-term ambitions and is putting the logistic support and uh, military planning behind it. Yeah, in fact, Beijing is preparing to conduct military exercises with Moscow. Uh, yeah. in, in Russia next Tuesday, uh, as new evidence reveals that China is building up its navy once again to rival the United States, building at least six more guided missile destroyers, Jonathan. We've talked about this for a long time, that right now the, the China navy it, it perhaps is larger than the U.S. navy. We haven't been investing the way that the CCP has been. What do you make of these military exercises with Moscow? Clearly, the CCP has partnered with Russia. Uh, and, and, and Russia continues to create death and destruction in Ukraine. Well, that's right. I mean, that's what this partnership is. It's a military partnership. Um, you know, they established the Shanghai Cooperation Organization in 2001, so you have 20 years' worth of uh, Russia-China sort of deepening of their strategic relations. The Chinese Defense Ministry called the upcoming Vostok exercises an, op an opportunity to enhance uh, strategic coordination. So um, this is in the middle, in the midst of uh, Moscow's atrocities in Ukraine. So we have to understand that these two are working together. I mean, this is a genuine, bona fide partnership with ideological depth. Um, you know, regular military exercise. I mean, Vostok is an annual thing um, in Russia's Far East. But at the same time, I mean, this is the kind of thing that you would cancel if you were against Putin's war in Ukraine. So, um, you know, looking at China as the main supporter, and the other side of this that you and I have talked about extensively is the role of Chinese companies um, in the Communist Party's grand strategy. And I think that's what everybody needs to understand, is the companies are the fundamental battle units in Chinese economic grand strategy. So, um, you know, a report by Yale University that's covered this probably better than anybody shows that all the major Chinese companies are still active in Russia. I mean, these are the things that are helping prop up the economy. That includes everything from Alibaba, Ant Financial, um, you know, major Chinese banks, China Mobile, DD, High Air, which used to be General Electric, you know, Honor, which is Huawei. Um, the whole list goes on. So, so this partnership is very deep, and it's time to start uh, striking at it, in my opinion. And I think you need real, um, you know, economic strike packages um, on Chinese companies that are, um, you know, propping up. Uh, Moscow, and to say nothing of their role in the Communist Party's own expansion. I mean, China Communication Construction Corporation, for example, which built the islands in the South China Sea, is also, as one might imagine, uh, active in the Russia market and not pulling back.
Well, I think you make a really important point on the corporate sector here. I just want to point out that the founder of Huawei is warning of a painful decade to come. Uh, he is talking about uh, global economic downturn coming up in a leaked memo. He told the staff the next decade will be a very painful historical period. But I want to go back to uh, what we're seeing in terms of the U.S.'s uh, impact of all of this, because the U.S. and China are reportedly nearing an agreement that would allow American accounting regulators to travel to Hong Kong to inspect the audit records of Chinese companies listed on U.S. exchanges. If a deal is not reached, more than 200 U.S.-listed Chinese companies face a potential delisting beginning in 2024, Jonathan. Uh, these are the very companies that the federal thrift fund has opened a window so that government employees can buy all these Chinese stocks in their 401k plans. I've had a problem with this since this was announced. Why are we having government employees invest and fund the expansion of the very companies that may turn around and get hostile on America since they want to overtake the United States as the number one superpower? What about this deal with these uh, potential delisting? And uh, how do you see the corporate end of that playing out? Well, it doesn't mean the deal will get done. And at the end of the day, I mean, that's the sort of backwards uh, aspect of U.S.-China strategy is that we are um, continuing to pour capital into our adversary. I mean, you can, you can buy, um, you know, yes, the big pension funds, the public pension funds are all um, still investing um, in Chinese companies, majorly, um, mainly through the index funds, as far as I can tell. And, and it's our institutional investment firms that are providing that service to uh, American, um, you know, pension holders and everybody else. I mean, we shouldn't be doing that. It's absolutely backwards. Uh, to be funding this regime. And I think many national security leaders have called that out, including the Wall Street Journal. Um, but, you know, what we, what we also have to understand is that just as important, I mean, you know, the, the listing of 200 Chinese companies, many of which are state-owned, by the way, um, wherever, whichever direction that goes, it's also um, you know, China's own internal capital markets that we have to be careful of. So I think having our own investment banks in China, um, helping them uh, increase the sophistication of their own ability to capitalize corporations, I mean, that's also very dangerous. I mean, we've got to stop doing that. You yep. know, our bankers in China helping them develop uh, better capital markets is uh, probably more important than um, whatever they can do on our own exchanges. But in both cases, cutting off the yep. capital flow to our primary adversary, I think, is um, one of the key pieces of this. And the other side is realizing that the corporate sector is the battle space on both sides. I mean, it's both our companies yeah. that are going to have to expand in global markets to take out places like, you know, entities like Huawei. Um, I mean, we may have stopped Huawei in many um, developed countries, but they're still succeeding in Brazil, in Indonesia, across Africa. Yeah. I mean, Huawei is out there building the emerging world where our companies are not providing alternatives. So we need to be in that game of global expansion. Yeah. Um, and at the same time, we need to be putting um, the lid on um, investment into China. And that's the job of Congress, yeah, I mean, as much as the administration. Let, let's not forget what John Ratcliffe told me the CCP strategy is when it comes to corporate America. Rob, replicate, replace. Very simple. Rob, replicate, replace. Jonathan, we're going to be watching all of that. It's good to see you this morning. Jonathan Ward joining us on China and the impact.